<laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Will Smith just smacked the shit out of me. Will Smith, you messed up. You crazy. Is everyone sick of the slap? Jada, I love you. G.I. Jane 2, can't wait to see it. All right? No, that's funny. Will's laughing. Chris Rock, the comedian that got slapped by Will Smith during the Oscars, has demanded a lawsuit to be filed against Will Smith. Most people would be aware that Chris Rock had requested that no charges be filed against Will Smith for his assault. However, as the situation has developed, it appears that Chris Rock's stance is also changing. Not just this. It has only been a week since the Oscars Academy also announced a decade-long ban against the Pursuit of Happiness star. Considering this development, it appears that the situation is continuing to worsen for Will Smith. So how exactly could things go from here, and what does Chris Rock have to say about it? Let's find out in this video. How and why has Chris Rock responded the way he did since he got slapped in front of millions at the Oscars this year? It's a simple but reasonable question, one that the whole world is asking after Will Smith smacked the comedian on live television during Sunday's Oscars. In the 48 hours following the now-famous blow, it has been the talk of the internet and media, but Rock has stayed unusually silent. That is, until Wednesday evening, when Rock, at a stand-up concert in Boston, broke his quiet and addressed the issue publicly. Whoa, okay, he screamed as he walked onto the Wilbur Theater stage, dressed entirely in white. The 57-year-old was received like a rock star by the 1,000-seat venue's audience. Rock basked in the standing ovation, which lasted nearly two minutes, before attempting to kick off the evening's festivities. Yo, let me do the show! Rock addressed the elephant in the room after a couple more rounds of clapping. How was your weekend? Fuck Will Smith, yelled one member of the audience, but Rock disregarded the remark and continued his hour-long concert. He said, I'm going to tell some jokes. It's nice to be out. There was a minor media frenzy outside the rather inconspicuous theater before the 7.30 p.m. show, which got more frenetic. At least a dozen television journalists wrapped up in the 30-degree New England weather were set up as early as two hours before showtime. Around 6 p.m., one witness said, This is insane as he passed by a slew of cameras and on-air reporters. Local religious groups gathered in front of the Wilbur Theater before the play to make a statement about the incident regarding our brothers, and to send a message that violence is not the way to resolve conflict. To a small throng of reporters, Kevin C. Peterson, founder of the New Democracy Coalition, a nonpartisan and nonprofit group that focuses on civic participation, stated, This is a teachable moment, so we end the cycle of violence. That is underreported in the black community. The Wilbur event organizers did not appear thrilled with the crowds who had gathered. We have to get ready for a show, one Wilbur employee lamented, as he attempted to set up security ropes in front of the venue. We're trying to work now. Sam Wisnia, a 27-year-old Boston local, said it was serendipitous that Rock would make his first public appearance only a short distance from his birthplace. He obtained tickets the morning after the Oscars, and he acted quickly enough to get one for $70. I didn't watch the Oscars live, but I watched the clip plenty of times, said Wisnia, alluding to the footage of Smith slapping Rock. I hope he leads his set with the whole situation and he can find the humor in it. Jesse Sitaro, 32, a Boston native, spotted an Instagram post for Rock's event after he got smacked. He paid $225, which he deems a bargain compared to what others paid. Sitaro was unconcerned about the press circus around the theater. Why wouldn't they be here? It's a historic night, he remarked. The wallets of Wisnia and Sitaro were quite lucky. Others in the audience claimed to pay between $800 and $1,200 for their tickets. People on the balcony were taunted by comedian Rick Ingram, who was Rock's opening act. During his act, he joked, 
Never thought you'd pay $1,000 for the worst seats in the house. Rock's silence may have contributed to the near impossibility of finding tickets for his stand-up comedy tour. Rock was scheduled to perform four performances in Boston beginning on Wednesday by chance. Next month, he begins his Ego Death World tour, which kicks off in New Jersey. It's the first time in five years that Rock has been on the road. His four-day stay in Boston began on Wednesday at the Wilbur Theatre, where he performed two sold-out shows at 7.30 p.m. and 10 p.m. COVID immunization certificates were needed for all visitors. Tickets sold out rapidly on Ticketmaster and were resold for astronomically high prices on StubHub and other ticket exchange and resale websites. Tickets were originally priced at $49.50, but after the tragic Oscars incident, they were being scalped for as much as $800 to $8,000 on secondary sites. It's unclear whether the $8,000 tickets were actually purchased. The 7.30 p.m. concert was extremely popular because many fans expected it to be the first time Rock publicly responded to Smith's violent outburst. Compared to the previous month, StubHub witnessed more than 25 times the daily sales during the last two days, according to a spokesman. It is incredibly unusual to see the spike we have experienced, said Mike Silvera, spokesperson for StubHub. Similarly, the online ticket reseller TickPick wrote Monday on Twitter, We sold more tickets to see Chris Rock overnight than we did in the past month combined. The event occurred during the 94th Academy Awards when Rock was on stage, presenting the Best Documentary Feature category. Smith's wife, Jada Pinkett Smith, and her shaved head were the subject of a joke by the comic, who was riffing on A-list celebs in the crowd before deviating from the script to make a joke about Smith's wife, Jada Pinkett Smith, and her shaved head. The actress suffers from alopecia, a disorder that causes hair loss. Jada, I love you. G.I. Jane 2, can't wait to see it, all right? Rock said, referring to the 1997 action movie in which Demi Moore's character has a shaved head. The jab made Smith giggle at first. He instantly switches gears and came on stage to slap Rock in the face after looking at Pinkett Smith and observing her huge eye roll at the joke. Everyone, including Rock, believed the ruse was a joke at first, but it quickly became evident that this was not the case. <laughs> oh, wow! Wow! Will Smith just smacked the sh out of me. The moment he returned to his seat, Smith yelled, Get my name out your mouth! Wow, dude! Yeah. It was a G.I. Jane joke. That prompted Smith to shout at a louder octave, Keep my wife's name out your mouth! I'm going to, okay? Rock also appeared visibly shaken on stage and also visibly struggled to collect his thoughts. That was a uh, greatest night in the history of television. Okay. Smith won the Oscar for Best Actor for his betrayal of tennis instructor Richard Williams in King Richard, a feel-good sports film in which he plays the father of tennis stars Venus and Serena Williams. Shortly after striking Rock, Smith apologized to the Academy and his fellow Best Actor candidates in a sad acceptance speech. But he didn't name Rock. He also sought to link the incident to his on-screen persona in King Richard in his statements. Richard Williams was a fierce defender of his family, Smith said. Art imitates life. I look like the crazy father, just like they said about Richard Williams. Later, at some point in his speech, he said, In this business, you got to be able to have people disrespect you. And you got to smile, and you got to pretend like that's okay. A few days later, Smith also issued an apology to Rock on Instagram. I would like to publicly apologize to you, Chris. I was out of line and I was wrong. I am embarrassed and my actions are not indicative of the man I want to be. While Chris Rock initially declined to file charges against Will Smith, it appears that the situation may be changing now. After all, the Academy did expose Will Smith to a 10-year-long ban. The ban was made evident through a letter written by Academy President David Rubin and CEO Don Hudson. Here's what it said. For a period of 10 years, from April 8, 2022, Mr. Smith shall not be permitted to attend any Academy events or programs, in person or virtually, including but not limited to the Academy Awards. This action we are taking today in response to Will Smith's behavior is a step toward a larger goal of protecting the safety of our performers and guests and restoring trust in the Academy. We also hope this can begin a time of healing and restoration for all involved and impacted. What are your thoughts regarding this whole mess of a situation? Do share your thoughts in the comments below.